I'm just gonna stay in here for the whole review, okay? I mean, <laughs> Lady Gaga came in an egg. Ah, uh, hey, I'm Jeff Paul of Rick Radio, and tonight the Grammys happened, if you weren't aware. The first big event of the night didn't even happen on the show. It was on the red carpet when Lady Gaga was carried in in a, in a um, semi-opaque egg. You can kind of see her in there. Uh, what was my opinion on that? I absolutely loved it. I mean, a lot of people didn't get it if they didn't understand um, Born This Way was the single that was coming out, that had come out just recently, just a couple days ago. So she was continuing with that theme. And then the show finally starts. And five awesome divas was Christina Aguilera, Yolanda Adams, um, Flo of Florence and the Machines, um, Jennifer Hudson, and, and, uh, Martina McBride all sang an Aretha Franklin tribute. It was really awesome to see if they included all the genres in indie, which is Florence, pop, R&B, country, and it was pretty nice to watch, I guess. First award was best performance by a pop, a duo, or a group, and, um, Beat Out was Paramore and Glee. And winning was Hazel Sister live performance um, by Train. Uh, that that's a pretty big song this year that I never really attached to. What do you think about that win? I know a lot of you might be upset about the Paramore, especially. So tell me your thoughts. Next was the big event. It was Gaga's first live performance of her new Born This Way. Um, she came out of the egg. She dressed up in what kind of seemed like a, a church outfit. That was. That was part of the theme. Um, she had shoulder prosthetics, which I thought were really cool. I've never seen that before. I don't know if Madonna did it, but I don't remember seeing that. But anyways, um, a lot of people were, were saying that <clears throat> this was kind of a throwback to Madonna, or intentionally or not. I don't know. Um, I, I, I still haven't heard about what Gaga said about that as opposed to Madonna, how, you know, it juxtaposed to Madonna, which, and if that's the route that she was going for. There was a, an entire, um, maybe 20 minute interview on 60 seconds, 60, 60 minutes, um, right before the Grammys tonight, and she talked about kind of what we always hear about her personality, her history, and who is Gaga. It was very funny. Um, but she didn't talk about much about that song. One of the best performances of the night was a rock performance by Muse. Um, it wasn't so much, the they sounded pretty good, but the uh, main event was the light show, as I like to call it. It was the towers. They represented um, a display they had on tour um, when they toured last. Images of different TVs stacked up, so it literally looked like you were seeing all these TVs or screens stacked up, and they would fall down, and it was really something to see. If you can catch that online, which uh, you probably go at Grammy.com to watch um, some of the videos, but definitely catch that one. They have performers, they have performers down on the floor knocking some of the TVs out, and it was really powerful. Another pretty great performance that was done tonight was by, uh, through a B.O.B., uh, Bruno Mars and Janelle Monae. I've always liked Janelle Monae, but I kept saying I've never seen her in a different outfit. I know this is kind of her theme, but I've known her for a couple of years now. I've liked her for a couple of years now, and she doesn't really switch it up. It was a pretty great performance, and Bruno Mars, someone that I've been judging a lot to be in in such a high power in the pop industry, um, he did a pretty good job. I really, really hate the song Grenade. Um, I think it's uh, so pretentious and uh, just regurgitated pop, um, but he did something very cool with it. <laughs> they were like dubbing, they were completely washing grayscale, and... Um, and he did a kind of throwback to maybe a, a 60s performance of that song, he slowed down. It was uh, pretty sweet. So Bieber performed, and I was like, wow, no autotune, he's, he's grown up. Um, but there's a sweet little thing that um, him and Usher went through, because Usher, if you don't know Bieber's history, um, Usher kind of discovered him, and they, they showed those beginnings it was it was, it was mo very much a kind of mentor night because Eminem and Dr. Dre kind of did the same thing, uh, but at one point during the Beavers slash Usher performance, by the way, um, I never want to hear "Oh My God" again. I've heard that song three times in my life, only three, because I don't listen to mainstream radio. It's obviously not in my catalog of music. 
And um, the only times I've ever heard it was during live performances that I was really forced to listen to because I was watching other live performances on television. But anyways, during that performance, they did a synchronized dance together. It was so cute. And presenting the award for Best Rock Album was Paramore and Polly Perrette, two awesome, awesome groups of people. And Muse won. Uh, Muse gave a shout out to his pregnant girlfriend in a very awkward way. I, I felt uncomfortable. Also tonight, Best Pop Album Gaga won for the Fame Monster, gave a teary speech, and then right after that was a folk rock performance. This was one of my favorite performances of the night. It was Mumford & Sons, Abbott Brothers, and Bob Dylan. Now, when I watched Mumford & Sons, I was totally, totally taken. Um, their performance out of anybody in the show, in any Grammy or an award show that I've ever watched, it was so genuine. It was almost like the big um, celebrity crowd wasn't there. They were laughing, they were having a good time, they were performing. That was beautiful. Our brothers were pretty good, sounded good. They were along the same lines of the same genre. And then it got to Bob Dylan. I'm a very big classic Bob Dylan fan. Um, you know, what's not to like about the legend, but it, it scares me. I'm not going to pose and say, oh, you know, Bob Dylan, he sounded great. He sounded like he had eaten a lot of sand and was dying. Okay? He's, sometimes, he's, he, he was incomprehensible when he was younger, but now it's really bad. And the rest of the bands kind of did a collab with him. Um, you know, they got behind him and sang the song with him, but they were practically carrying him. You could hear everybody else's voice, and then this this rustle, this static, which was Bob Dylan's voice. One of the most shocking, if Gaga's wasn't, was CeeLo's performance of Forget You or F*** You, you know, however you want to say it. But, it, it, who would have thought that it would have went like this? Okay, imagine, stage full of Muppets, and CeeLo dressed like... I, I thought Peacock also. I think somebody said that on Twitter. Um, but it it was nuts. It was absolutely crazy. Um, and Gwyneth Paltrow sang that song with him. And I think some people were confused on why she was singing it all or why she was singing that song. And, I mean, if you don't know, she sang that song when she guessed appeared on Glee. Neil Patrick Harris presented the next performance, which was Katy Perry. And she started out on a swing. And she sang Just Like the Movies, I think it's called. What I thought was cute, not everyone would think this was cute, but she rolled her footage of her and Russell's wedding. And I thought it was kind of adorable. But a lot of people were like, um, that's enough. Oh, for all the Valentine's Day lovers, let's do Teenage Dream. Of course, of course, Katie, of course, do Teenage Dream. And there was a display. They kind of remind me of Moulin Rouge. Anybody else think that way? John Mayer, uh, Nora Jones, and Keith Urban immediately got on stage. They were kind of on the other end. And they sang um, a tribute to Dolly Parton, which they sang Jolie. Uh, did anybody see John Mayer at this award show? He was channeling Johnny Depp. I think he wanted to be Johnny Depp. He really did. Like, that's... I was waiting for people, for somebody else to tweet that if I wasn't just seeing it. Because I was like... What did I miss? Need You Now brought home a lot of awards, so we had to hear it a whole bunch of times. Oh, I really hate that song. So we get to watch I Love The Way You Lie Again. It was at a, in another award show that I watched, um, so we got to see that again. And then um, they, uh, Eminem also performed the song I Need A Doctor, which I actually really liked. I don't follow him, but I really dug that song. And he guest featured uh, Dr. Dre, which was the second kind of mentory um, kind of tribute of the evening. Next was New Artist, and this was the one that took me by the most surprise. Um, I was voting for either Florence the Machine or Mumford and Sons, but was sure Bieber was going to get it. Who got it? It was um, Esperanza Spalding. Yep, I got that right. It was a big surprise to me. Was it a big surprise to you? I, I'm gonna just say, yeah, it was. Nobody thought Esperanza Spalding was going to win. The last performance I'm going to talk about, it was Mick Jagger's per uh, performance. It was a tribute to Solomon Burke, and it was full of fire. That guy had, had as much energy as he did 50 freaking years ago. 
audibly it was okay, but it was just so much fun to see him jump around and rock it out. But the biggest win for us tonight probably was album of the year, which was won by Arcade Fire and it was the album of the suburbs. You could see they were pretty excited. Um, yeah, it's very exciting that such an indie artist would win such a huge award. Those were the awards. But I'll see you later. I'm gonna be talking to some important people. You'll see what I mean. See you guys later. Peace, love, rock and roll.